Hello, welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. Um, I'm going to take a look at this puzzle. This is another viewer requested puzzle. It came in yesterday uh, from Gary. Thank you, Gary, for sending this in. Um, he says this is an extreme rated puzzle from uh, an app called Genina, uh, G E N I N A. Um, and apparently they have a Sudoku app. And here we go. This is the puzzle. Now, I don't know how hard this is going to be. Uh, extreme grades vary a lot. Um, but we'll see how we go. So two here, two here, so this square has got to be a two. Um, okay, and you can see now this seven interacts on this three by three block in a good way. We don't know where the seven goes in this block except it's in one of the uh, positions in row two. So the seven in this block must be in one of these two positions and there's a seven here. So we can place a seven make some pencil mark sevens at the bottom there uh, just to remind us that sevens are limited to just these two positions uh, in this block um, da, 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 nine nine here nine here and a nine here so that allows us to place a nine into this square and pencil mark some nines up there nine, one seven seven two threes, we can pencil mark into one of those two positions, fives, four, go, twos, yep, and twos in the same way, twos in the central block there, ah, seven, seven, and this seven again limits a seven to that cell, so let's put that in. And okay, can't go further than that at this point. Don't think with sevens. Sixes. This six and this six interact on this three by three block down at the bottom. It forces that to be a six. That's nice. That gives us some pencil marks up at the top there. We've got a lot of numbers now in this bottom row. So let's just check this. We need to place four, five, and seven. Ah, there's a seven here, so yeah, okay, so we can remove that. This is now a seven. This must be a five because of this five here, and this is a four. And let's make sure we keep up with our pencil marks. So five, five means we can pencil mark two fives here because of this five over there. Uh, fours, we can't do anything with yet, I don't think. Pencil marks some eights there though. Six, six, uh, just nine. Ah, nine, nine here. This has got to be a nine in this square. And that means this is a nine from our earlier pencil markings, which is nice. And in fact, this is a nine as well. So I think. We have now, once I put that nine in, we've now finished the nines. So that's a reasonable start. And what do we need here? Ah, well, I need to place two, three, and eight in this bottom three by three block. But look, we already have a two and a three in column eight. So this square can only be an eight. We can put the eight in. We can pencil mark eights into these two squares because of this eight here. And we can pencil mark twos and threes into these two squares. Now, if we look at column eight now, we have seven numbers placed, so that open positions are one and four. I'm going to pencil mark those in just because you know squares that are limited to only two possibilities in extreme puzzles, you do tend to need to keep a record of those. Um, if it was just um, fiendish or a super fiendish in the Times or a New York Times hard puzzle, I probably wouldn't bother, but most extreme puzzles do require quite extensive pencil marking. Uh, so what can we do now? Let's We've got lots and lots of rows and columns and boxes that contain lots of digits, so we might have to do a bit of a trawl here to find out which the limited squares are. 
Uh, in fact, I'm going to remove the pencil marks from here. For example, in row three, we need a one, five, and a six. So it's one, five, or six. This square, though, is only a five or a six. And this square is only a one or a six. So we're starting to find quite a few squares now that are restricted. Um, let's take a look at column five here. We need one, four, seven, and eight. Eight. So that's one, four, or seven. That can be lots of things. Ah, oh, that can only be one or four in this square. Um, okay, so we've got one, four, seven, and one and four here. So if any of the open positions in row two are limited to a subset of one, four, and seven, then we will have a triple in co in row two. So let's check that. Uh, Fact, which this square is probably the most restricted. This can be a one, four, or a seven, in fact. This two is very nice. Well, I suppose this two has the same effect, and the six here. So that is quite helpful. So now we've got one, four, and seven going across row two, and we need to place um, three, five, six, and eight. Well, this square, this square can only be a 6, I think, because we have an 8, a 3, and a 5, all pointing at this square already. So that is a 6, and that is useful or not? It's not as useful as I, as I was hoping. Um, this can only be a 1 or a 4 now, and we still need to place 3, 5, and 8 in in row two, so that's a three or a five. This can be any oops, this can be any of the options, and this is a three or an eight. Okay. I'm now going to check um, column six because this one four is nice and obviously we've just got this six in there. We've now got five numbers placed so we need how do we need one three four and seven. One, three, four here. One, three, oh, hang on. Seven. Yes, there's a hidden single. There's only one position for a seven in um, in column six, and that's down at the bottom there. Doesn't do anything for us, unfortunately. We've got lots and lots of sevens in the grid. We can, I suppose there's pencil mark sevens into those two squares, but it marries the positions of the sevens here, and I think the only way of resolving those sevens is going to be by finding other numbers that restrict one of these four squares. So what can we see? Oh, well, I suppose we've got another, we've now got a one, a four, and a three in the same row as a one and a four if we look at row four. So again, if we can find cells that are just limited to one, four, and three going across this row, we're happy again and we'll have a triple in the row. So let's, in fact, there's loads of restrictions in, in row four because so many of the columns have lots and lots of digits in. So let's take a look at this square first. So one, three, uh, four, and six here. That's not so good. Um, this square, one, three, five, and six. One, three, and okay, so there is a triple or quadruple, I should say, but on an extra number. We need the numbers one, three, four, and six. And you can see now in four cells going across row four, we have a subset of those four numbers. So these numbers must be in these four cells. And that means the other two cells have to take the remaining numbers in the row. Now, we haven't placed a two and an eight anywhere yet in row four, so this is a two or an eight, and this is a two or an eight. Now, does, ah, that, yes, it certainly helps here. It might help over here too, but let's take a look at column nine now. We have a three eight, a two eight, and a two three. So this is now a triple on two, three, and eight, going down column nine. So there's loads and loads of triples in this puzzle, and quadruples, and what you would call it. So this now must be a one or a six. Um, okay, now, so one way I, just to say how I'm thinking here, if 
finding this 2, 3 and 8 is nice, but the really important thing is to think about the cells that are affected by the fact that we have this, this triple. And the cell that's most affected actually is this one, because if we hadn't found the triple, this square could still be an awful lot of things. It could be four digits, and we've managed to eliminate um, two of those digits because of this triple. So this square, I think, is going to be important in the solve. Now, it might be that it's important because we can identify a pair in the block. So I'm going to check that in just a second, especially this square. Or it might be we need to look at the row. But definitely this square is interesting. So one, three, four, and eight here. So oh, that is, that's limited, but not in the way I was expecting. So this can be a four or an eight. Hmm. Just check this square for good order. So this can be a two, four, or this can be anything. Um, six and eight, I think. So that's no good. Okay, we're going I'm gonna study um, row five more now. So which squares are very limited? This one. One, four, seven, and eight. can't see a way of restricting that. I might be missing something there. Uh, this square, I think I've already looked. Have I already looked at this square? I'm getting confused now with the pencil marks, but this can, this can still be a lot of things anyway, I think. Um, this can still be one, two, can't be three, could be four, five, six, Gosh, it could even be. Oh, this, this, can be this can be anything. Um, might, so this square then, because we already have five given numbers in uh, column three, so we need one, three, five, and uh, this is better. Yes. Ah, there you go. Okay. So there's the one six. So this was important. Finding this two three eight was important. It marries up now with this one six that we've now managed to find over here. Now we can eliminate all of the ones and sixes across the row, which is nice. Um, and we'll check maybe we'll check this square as well because this square now can only be two, four, seven or eight. So that's ah this is very limited as well. This is four or eight. Now what are we missing? Okay, well the first thing that's obvious is if we look at this three by three block because we eliminated a 6 from this square, there's now only one place a 6 can go, and that's here. So let's put that in. Let's see if well, that works. That's going to be really useful. That's going to give us loads of numbers because it's chaining in two directions getting this 6. Firstly, it gives us a 1 here, which is nice in and of itself. Um, Secondly, of course, it comes up to this square and gives us a 1 there as well. And this one interacts with the 4. So it gives us a few, and in fact, that's going to give us a few more digits. It's going to give us a, a 4 up here too. Which now gives us a 1, 3 pair in this column, which might be nice. So this can only be 2, 4, 7, or 8, which means this is a 4 or an 8. Ah, and there we go. There's now a 4, 8 pair in row 6, I think. Good Lord. Um, which means this can no longer be an 8. So I think the only place, therefore, the 8 can go in this block is here. Let's put that in. That's nice, isn't it? That's going to allow us to remove those and that. Two, four, eight, four, seven. So this could be three, four, or six, and there's already a six in the row. So this is a three or a four, and it can't be a four because we have a four, eight pair. So this square is a three, which means this is a six and this is a four, and it may be that we've cracked the puzzle. I don't want to speak too soon, but you can certainly see that we're all of a sudden making rather better progress than we were. Um, and now looking down, I need to place an 8 still um, in 
column five, and there's only one place that can go, which is there. This must be a one or a four. Okay, uh, we need one, three, and six to complete column two. So this is a one or a three. I'll pencil mark that because that's so restricted. And let's just see if we can spot anything more. So we need one, three, and six as well across the, the top row. So one, six, one, three, six, three, six, I think. Uh, I feel like I'm missing something really obvious now, which is never a good feeling when you're solving Sudoku. Um, what am I missing? Apologies. Ah, hang on. This column looks like I'll be able to get something more. Yes, I can. Okay, so there's a 5 here. This must be a 3. Therefore, this is a 1. 4, 1, 7, 1, 4, 8, <laughs> 2, 7. Yeah, okay. Well, you can see, I think, that unless I have made an error, um, the puzzle is solved. So what an interesting uh, exercise, actually. Um, a little bit of intuition and uh, a lot of pencil marking today. But it was actually necessary because there were so many of these hidden uh, quadruples, doubles, triples, etc. Um, it's quite a good workout for that reason. Now, this should be a six if everything's working out correctly. This should be a four. This should be a two. And there we go. Yeah, that is the solution. So thanks very much, Gary, for sending this in. Interesting puzzle. I hope uh, you enjoyed watching us solve it. Keep your puzzles coming. Uh, we'll have a look at crosswords. We'll have a look at Sudoku. We'll have a look at any puzzles, actually, frankly. Uh, we're a bit uh, puzzle fiends. Uh, if you enjoy the channel, please subscribe. We really appreciate that. And we'll be back soon with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.